Well, good evening. Good evening. And welcome to the regular board meeting, August 21st of the Board of the City Commission. This time I will ask City Clerk Beth Cecil to please call the roll. Commissioner Jay Villotta. Here. Commissioner Larry Condor. Here. Mayor Tom Watson. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Bob Glenn. Here. Commissioner Pam Smith Wright. Here. Thank you. At this time I'll ask you to please stand for the invocation and the pledge to the flag. I ask you to pray in the manner that uh, makes you most comfortable. O oh, loving God, as we gather today, do the business of this great community. We ask for your wisdom to make decisions for the good of all, but not for what is politically expedient. We humbly ask for your guidance to govern in a thoughtful and caring manner, knowing full well that we will not make everyone happy. But I pray that everyone knows that every decision we make with a kind heart as we decide which bridge to burn and which bridge to cross. We ask that you put your hand on the shoulders of all those that keep us safe while putting themselves in harm's way, both at home and abroad. And Father, please know that we are forever grateful and thankful for all our bounty. And without your love and kindness, we would be lost forever, keeping in mind, because even if you don't think you know God, God knows you. So please join me in saying, Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Another precinct heard from Bowling Green calling about their TIFF. We'll take it. Okay. The first item on tonight's agenda is an outstanding pres presentation by the one and only Tim Ross, air show update. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioner. You're welcome. I appreciate that introduction. Um, Tim Ross, Public Events Director, I wanted to update the Commission and the public about the air show we've got coming up. Most everybody uh, is familiar with it, as we've been doing it for several years, but um, wanted to just give a general update on some of the parking and street closures and things like that for the Commission and uh, the folks this evening. It's coming up just over a month away, September 14, 15, 16. Uh, I'll run through the, some of the performers that we're going to have at the show this year. It's a, a kind of a mix of folks to um, highlight different interests of lots of different uh, people. The Sky Soldiers were here last year. It's the Army Aviation Heritage Foundation. They help spread the word about the Army, and they do paid rides on that Huey and the Cobra Chopper. Um, last year, they went through quite a few, and they had some lines, so they're bringing a third helicopter in this year to be able to accommodate folks because it was received quite well. So they'll be back again doing rides Friday, Saturday, and Sunday out at the airport, and as well as performing in the show. We've got some Warbirds, the P-51 that people love, the Corsair that people, uh, all the old uh, aviation military buffs enjoy. Bill Stein's a world-renowned aerobatic pilot. Rob Holland's won more um, national aerobatic championships than I can remember. The Blue Angels are here with their C-130 that they nicknamed Fat Albert. KC-135, big tanker scheduled to be here on display that Friday evening. Uh, Matt Yunkin, Twin Beach. So just a wide display of different types of aircraft. Paradigm Aerobatic Team, uh, you can look them up online. They're paramotors and things that I would get nervous to get in, but they do some amazing displays in these. <laughs> and um, the air show industry has really taken uh, affinity to this new team, and we're thrilled to be able to get them here. Gene Susie's back again. He does a nighttime show as part of his routine out at the airport. And then obviously the Blue Angels are headlining that most people are familiar with. Um, we um, start the activities on Friday out at the airport like we've done numerous times. Uh, so the gates out at the airport will open around 4 p.m. Um, if we can get them open a little sooner, we will, but about 4 p.m. and then we'll wrap up about 8.30 that evening. So there'll be a pretty good assortment of aircraft on display, things for the kids to, to climb in and out of and see up close, um, chance to get to meet some of the pilots. The Blue Angels will bring one of their spare aircraft down and have that up close so people can get photos and meet some of the pilots for a time like we've done. So it's a great chance to, to kind of experience it uh, up close. 
And uh, we'll finish off the night with some aerobatics up in the sky after sunset and some fireworks thanks to Independence Bank and their partnership with us. Uh, parking that evening um, is mm -hmm. in fields out in front along uh, Biddle Road there. Uh, we know the state is doing some work there on 81 that's making it challenging getting in access off of Airport Road. So we're trying to encourage as many folks as we can to come in off of Carter Road and Biddle uh, as opposed to using uh, Parish and Airport Road. But we'll have staff out there that will direct all those parking lots um, to get people in and out as quickly as we can. And then Saturday activities, the bridge day and bridge run starts first thing in the morning. Uh, it's a 10K and a 5K run this year. And um, so that starts right down along the water. At, uh, about 7.15, that first run will start. And then once all the runners are done around nine o'clock, we'll open up the bridge like we've been doing for several years for folks just to stroll, ride their bikes, take a nice stroll over the bridge prior to the air show starting. So about 12 o'clock, they'll start clearing the bridge to make sure it is open again and everybody's cleared before we start the air show about 12.30. And then downtown Riverfront, the show will be 12.30. It'll wrap up right around four o'clock, both Saturday and Sunday. Numerous food vendors um, up and down the street, aviation vendors, Blue Angels merchandise, things like that, um, that uh, anybody might want. Convention Center, as we've been doing, has got reserved seating. Um, they're completely sold out of everything on Saturday uh, at this point, so there's no opportunity there, which is great for us. They've already sold out. Sunday, they've got less than 200 tickets, I think, left out of the 1,800 or 2,000 that were available. So uh, if you want to get a ticket for reserved seating, you better do it fairly quickly because they'll probably be sold out by this weekend. Um, parking, numerous surface lots. I know that most all of them are charging for parking, whether it's the garages or the church lots, um, but there's plenty of parking throughout downtown. And then obviously viewing all along the riverfront as well as English Park is a great place to watch the show. We get a lot of requests for folks wanting to know when the river's closed. Um, there are some practice days leading up to the show and we've got the Coast Guard has sent out the notice to Mariners that the river will be closed from approximately 1130 to around 430 uh, each day, Thursday through Sunday. And we have posted that on our website as well as um, notice to boaters down at English Park boat ramp. And that'll be posted about a week or two weeks prior to the show <coughs> to let those Mariners know. A couple opportunities, Community Heroes Night, Kentucky Legends, a great partner of the show as well. And so uh, it's a $5 admission to get in out of the airport on Friday, but um, Kentucky Legend covers that cost. So all veterans, first responders get in free that evening. And then they've also got a chance for you to sign up for a chance to win uh, a ride on one of those Huey choppers the next day. So they had quite a few folks that signed up for that when they did it last year. And they decided they wanted to do that again. All the information's on the website. And then uh, we do some contests. Just take a look at the <coughs> city's Facebook page for the air show information to win the best seats in the house. So we're looking forward to a great weekend. Uh, the downtown hotels are sold out. Some of the other hotels in the community are pretty close to capacity. Uh, reserve seating's about gone. So we've been getting information and questions from folks for months and months from all over the country. So we're looking forward to a good weekend, busy weekend. Anything from the commission? All right, well, thank you. Well, Beth wants to ride in one of them Blue Angel things. I don't think we can make that happen. <laughs> I want to take a ride in Fat Albert so cause I, <laughs> cause I can't get in that small airplane. So and we're putting an order in. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is cons uh, Mr. Bell, are you going to charge parking on Bill Road? <laughs> no, I didn't let him have it. Okay. Consider board appointments. Uh, the Orangeboro River Port Authority Board of Directors reappoint Jacob Reed to a four-year term expiring September the 9th, 2022, and Joanne Shake to a four-year term, which expires September 22, 2022. Davis County Drug and Alcohol Steering Committee reappoint Rosalind Clark, Laura McElhern, and Jason Worth to three-year terms expiring September the 1st, 2021. I will entertain a motion to approve. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Item number six, Councilor, second reading. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Well. Uh, ordinance 13-2018, an ordinance amending code of ordinances for rates for water and water utility service as adopted by the City Utility Commission of the City of Owensboro, Kentucky 
on August the 2nd, 2018. Publicly read for approval on second reading this 21st day of August, 2018. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. City Manager, do you have any comments? I do not, Mayor. This is an OMU item. I didn't know their staff is here. Should there be any questions? Okay. Uh, at this time, we'll have a roll call vote. Commissioner Velada? Yes. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Glenn? Yes. Commissioner Smith Wright? Yes. Okay. Unanimous approval. Thank you all very much. Item number 6B, Counselor. Ordinance number 14 2018. An ordinance providing for the authorization, issuance, and sale of water revenue refunding and improvement bonds, series 2018, in the principal amount of $69 million or such lesser amount as may be necessary of the City of Orangeburg, Kentucky, for the purposes of refunding certain outstanding obligations payable from the revenues of the Municipal Waterworks of said city and paying the cost of extensions and improvements to the Municipal Waterworks of said city setting forth the terms and conditions on which said bonds and additional bonds ranking on a parity therewith are to be and may be issued and outstanding, providing for the security and payment of said bonds and interest thereon from the income and revenues of said municipal waterworks, and providing for the rights of the holders of said bonds in the enforcement thereof. Publicly read for approval on second reading this 21st day of August, 2018. Thank you, Councillor. I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Um, city manager talked about this last time. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, sir. Okay. Any discussion from the commission? Commissioner Condor. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, Mr. Frizzell, would you mind to uh, answer one or a couple of questions, please? Sure. Fairly generic. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Whenever, uh, I assume you've already had your meeting with Moody's and far as your credit rating for this transaction, if so, could you give us an update as far as what they rated the transaction and then what the outlook looks like because the water division is standalone outside of the power side. So it was evaluated specifically for the water division, correct? Correct. So we have had our, our meeting with Moody's. Our current rating is A1. Um, we haven't got the new rating yet, but the meeting went very well. We will get that on Monday. We expect uh, the same rating as we move forward. The, like I said, the, the meeting went very well and we don't expect a change in our rating. Uh, thank you very much. And just a last comment, please. You've been interim manager for how long? Uh, about six months. Six months. And in six months, you have done two of the most momentous type things for OMU that has been, not been done for a long, long time. In six months, you've been able to guide OMU into a different power plan. You've now had the water address. So in six months, I give you extreme kudos for being able to do those two things for our community that has been on the table for a long time. The Utilities Commission staff, the, the, the water districts, Christina, got a little bit of time to get here, but we did, finally got here. And it really has been important that our citizens understand how water is economically, how it affects us, to over well over two million dollars per day when water is not available and so again i thank you for your work i thank staff's work and the districts well done thank you mayor you're welcome anybody else commissioner glenn so for the public's benefit uh mr frizzell what is the timetable for sticking the shovels in the ground getting the project started and getting it finished i know we talked about this before but i think it's important to get that's that a good out question there. we will go out for bids next week uh, we expect to approve the bids uh, late fall probably in november time frame uh, we will be shovels in the ground shortly thereafter it's about a two-year construction window so uh, we'll be looking late 2020 uh, to finish up construction begin startup of the plant I have the plant online and up and running in early 21 and then we'll be shutting down um, expecting to shut down plan a uh, in the first half of, of calendar 21. the other uh, comment we've had this conversation before i i hope that omu as they go forward with this rate increase not just for city ratepayers but county will really work 
with people who are probably going to be up against it having this to deal with this increase on say a fixed income and I know we've talked about this before but I really hope that you and your board will take that to heart and your your staff will try to work with you you know some of the groups out in the community to make sure we don't have people have their water shut off or have a situation where they can't pay their bill um, but I do want to compliment you in the sense I know you I know your integrity I know your work record with OMU, and I, I want to echo Commissioner Condor. I am just extremely uh, awed at what you've accomplished in the short time you've been in that job. And, you know, when you tell me something, I believe it. You have incredible integrity. And so I, I want to appreciate all of what your board's done, but also what you've done, because I know you've worked very hard to get to this point. You don't got a hat with you, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting a pro raise. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that, but it, it, I've, I've played a small role. We have a great leadership team yes, at OMU, do. our commission. You have a real great. good team, yeah. And, uh, and we've worked well with the district, so it's been a team effort, and uh, I'm just happy to play a small part in it. But, but thank you. And, and my mother raised me thank right. You. <laughs> Even thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Okay, we'll have roll call vote now. Commissioner Smith Wright? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Glenn? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Commissioner Velada? Yes. And I'll take a second for all of you all to, especially those of you all that are running. It takes courage to come up here and do the right thing sometimes, and you all certainly have done it, and I'm very proud to serve with you. Thank you very much. Okay, do I got to do something else? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. No. aye. Oh, we already did that. Didn't we? We, did we, already did that. we already did a roll call. We already did a roll call. I just want to hear it again, quite twice. honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Woo! <laughs> That's a big one. Can we? Oh, never mind. Item number seven, ordinance. First reading, there will be no whoop, public comment. Never mind, JT. <laughs> um, 7A, consider ordinance, uh, Counselor. Ordinance 15-2018, an ordinance amending ordinance 16-2015 to amend the Gateway Commons tax increment financing development area to include additional property within the development area without changing the list of approved public infrastructure improvements or their cost or the amount of tax revenue that has been previously approved or committed for reimbursement by the Board of Commissioners of the City of Owensboro and the Commonwealth of Kentucky in regard to the Gateway Commons Development Project, introduced and publicly read on first reading this 21st day of August 2018. Thank you, Councillor. Um, we'd like for our City Manager to uh, make some public comments at this time concerning this ordinance, please. Yeah, we'd be happy to, Mayor. As we discussed last week at the work session, this ordinance amends the Gateway Commons development area to include an additional 16.25 acres. Additional property is being added for two reasons. One, to accommodate additional land that was acquired by the developer after the area was initially established, and two, at the request of the state so the boundary of the development area follows parcel lines. Currently, some parcels are split with a portion inside the TIF boundary and a portion outside the TIF boundary. In that situation, the state would have to prorate the portion that's inside and outside of the district, and they would prefer not to do that. So we're cleaning up the boundary to make it easier for the state to administer. We've had the public hearing, which is required in the amendment process, and received no feedback from the public. So after the commission approves the ordinance, the amendment will go to Frankfurt for final approval. Thank you, sir. Any public comment? And then thank you. Item 7B, Counselor. Ordinance 16-2018, an ordinance amending the annual budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2019, and amending Ordinance 9-2018 to revise all beginning fund balances, carry over all outstanding encumbrances, capital projects, rebudget previously appropriated funds, and to provide for activity at Center for Business and Research. Introduced and publicly read on first reading this 21st day of August 2018. Thank you, sir. City Manager? Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. This is the annual carryover budget amendment. It's largely a house cleaning item. It identifies encumbrances or ongoing projects on purchase orders that were not completed in the prior fiscal year. And it also records carryovers or funds from last year that we expected to bring forward uh, to supplement the current budget. 
all items in this ordinance were included in the budget ex uh, with one exception. So I did want to point out that exception because it was uh, unintentionally excluded uh, on page 1915. Uh, there is a lease agreement for the Center for Business and Research. We now lease the second floor of that facility to Owensboro Public Schools. Uh, it is a pass-through. We receive the revenue, uh, the rent, and then, and then forward it on to the landlord. Uh, however, uh, because it was a new item, we neglected to put it in the budget, but it has no net impact on the city budget because it is strictly a pass-through. Uh, and again, this is the first year, and so we omitted that for the budget. So we apologize and wanted to specifically point that out. Other than that, all the projects were included in the budget. And again, it's a housekeeping item, uh, but if you had any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions from the commission? Any questions from the public? Okay, item number 7C, Councilor. Ordinance 17-2018, an ordinance levying ad valorem taxes for municipal purposes for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2019 at the rate of 26.60 cents per $100 of assessed valuation of real property, 28.09 cents per $100 of assessed valuation of personal property, and 30.30 .30 cents per $100 of assessed valuation of vehicles and providing for the collection and apportionment of same. Introduced and publicly read on first reading this 21st day of August, 2018. Thank you, sir. City Manager, please explain this. I will do my best. Each year, the Commission sets our tax rates, and this ordinance sets our rates for 2018. As we presented in the budget brief and was incorporated into the budget approved by the Commission, we propose to take the 4% increase this year as allowed by law. The majority of revenue from this uh, property tax is from the real property which is property on real estate. Taking the 4% would increase our real property tax rate from 0 0.2620, or what we refer to as 26.2 cents, to 0 0.2660, or 26.6 cents. In the budget presentation we presented in May, we estimated the rate then at 26.58, a difference of only two ten thousandths from the actual. So I'll accommodate or uh, acknowledge Angela and her uh, prognostication on the rate was extremely close. I think the difference would be 20 cents a year on a $100,000 property. So she did a very good job of uh, determining in advance what that rate would be. Uh, the impact of this rate is, or increase is $4 per $100,000 in value. So a property value at $100,000 would pay $4 more this year than last year. A $200,000 property would pay $8 more per year and property in the city valued at $300,000 would pay $12 more a year or $1 a month. Taking the 4% increase provides $167,877 in additional revenue this year. These funds are needed to provide a small, very small buffer against increased pension contributions that we expect for the next several years. The state legislature passed a bill earlier this year which limited annual pension increases to 12% annually. Our cumulative increment cost, incremental cost for the next four years with a 12% increase will be $3.7 million. In situations like this, every dollar matters. Staff will continue to scrutinize expenses and search for potential cost savings. Considering the increase in expenses we expect over the next few years, it is prudent to take the 4%. Therefore, we provide a favorable recommendation for this ordinance with the rates as improved in the budget. Thank you. Any comments from the commission? Commissioner Condor? Uh, Nate, if you, your narrative, great. Could we back up just a little bit? If we do not take any type of tax rate increase at all versus what the 4% allows, that difference is 167,000. 877, correct. There you go. Uh, so that would be what you're foregoing by not doing that, correct? And then the compounding effect of having that over whatever term you want to, you know, 10, 20 years, doesn't matter what, what you really want to do. So that would be the, the biggest issue is the effect down the road, not necessarily just this year, but down the road, correct? It certainly adds up and compounds over time, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Any comment from the public? Okay, item number eight, municipal order, Councilor. Municipal Order 21-2018, a municipal order authorizing and directing the mayor 
to execute a first amended lease with the International Bluegrass Music Museum Incorporated, amending terms relating to a third floor restaurant and annual financial support from the City of Owensboro. Introduced and publicly read for approval this 21st day of August 2018. Could someone make a motion, please? So moved. Motion. Second, please. Second. Second. Okay. Discussion. City Manager. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor Commissioners, as you're aware, the original lease with the Bluegrass Museum required a restaurant to locate in a portion of the third floor of the new facility. Despite extensive marketing of the space, the museum has been unable to secure a tenant. Therefore, we have an amended lease for your consideration today. There are two changes to the lease. One, it removes the requirement for a restaurant to locate in their facility. And two, it adds a phase out of funding from the city to the museum over the next two fiscal years. Uh, museum Executive Director Chris Joslin is here this evening. And I'd like to acknowledge his efforts uh, as we negotiated this issue. Working collaboratively, we were able to craft an agreement that is uh, agreeable to both parties and in the best interest of both parties. This amendment continues the partnership between the city and the museum and allows the museum to de further develop as an important downtown destination. Thank you, sir. Any commissioner comments? Anybody from the public? Okay. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine, city manager. I'm in the hot seat tonight, baby. Sorry, I had a lot of paperwork. Uh, Mayor, for this item, if you would please acknowledge uh, Angela Hamrick to deliver that financial report. I acknowledge Angela Hamrick. Hey, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, Mayor and Commission, uh, the financial report for the month ended June 30, 2018. Our general fund revenues through June of $52,943,180 were $1,476,124 over budget, um, which is a good thing, primarily due to occupational and net profit license fee revenue. Our general fund expenditures of $50,558,745 were $1,815,469 under budget, primarily due to savings in personnel and timing of maintenance and supplies. The revenue and expenditures in our other funds are in line with the year-to-date budget, with the following exceptions. The Convention Center Operations Fund is under budget and revenues. Still due to timing, there's always going to be um, the one-month lag um, as far as what we forward them for one month and what they pay back to us the, the next month. Uh, and the Transit Fund is under budget and federal and state grant revenues, also due to timing, and this will be caught up uh, as a receivable on our audited financials. Um, if you will, refer to your screen so that we could uh, look at our year-end results in, in the bar graph. This graph represents the picture of our total uh, general fund revenues and expenditures for the fiscal year or 12 months into June 30. And I'll add that these are unaudited numbers. Um, we still have what we call our GASB 34 entries uh, to be made. The green bar reflects revenue at our old rates. The blue bar reflects revenues at the new rates. The red bar, of course, is our expenditures. The year end would have reflected a deficit of 3.3 million on the old rate structure. With the new rate structure, we have a surplus of $2,384,435. With that, I would like to briefly review the variances. Revenues are higher than budgeted, primarily due to occupational license fees and net profit fees. The occupational license fees are higher than budget by $382,493, which, which is very good news for us, and it's the best indicator of what our local economy is doing. The net profit license fees are higher than budget by $404,820, which is also a good indicator of our local businesses as well as their parent companies. Part of the net profit variance is due to an audit done by our tax department. Uh, they uh, found three years worth of net profits uh, by a, a business um, that hadn't been paying in, so we set up their business account um, and they paid three years worth of net profits in this one year. The, part of the variance is also due to timing a developer incentive payments that the city pays out to, uh, to our developers. On the expenditure side, our expenditures are lower than budget 
primarily due to timing of projects and savings and salaries and benefits due to vacancies in positions throughout the city. Please note that of the 1.8 million variants, 1.1 million, which was referenced earlier in our budget amendments, is carried over through the budget amendment for open POs, or purchase orders, wherein the city has contracted with vendors for services and supplies. The work was not completed in 2017-18 fiscal year and is being carried over or added to the 2018-19 fiscal year budget, thereby keeping in mind reducing the fund balance by the $1.1 million accordingly. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you, Ms. Hammer. Questions? Welcome, Commissioner Glenn. Yes, uh, Ms. Hammer, my <coughs> one question is, given that we f we're going to finish the year in decent shape, uh, what impact, if any, might that have long term on our bond rating? Ms. Uh, Ms. Hamrick? Well, you know, there's several things that influence our bond rating, and uh, the property tax taking that 4% to me is, is one of the bigger ones. And, um, and just to share with, with the Commission and the viewing audience, um, I had a conference call with Moody's about a month ago, and uh, they reached out to me yesterday um, and let me know that they'll have our report to us early next week and they specifically inquired about that the commission taking that four percent and uh, i shared with them that we did have first read for four percent today and they were um, happy to hear that in fact he said happy to hear that that's important to them that's a good stable uh, revenue stream and they like to see cities take advantage um, of that um they of course they always like to see uh, see a surplus um, the, the tax increases, um, as you can well see, were very helpful. Um, but like I mentioned uh, earlier, you know, the expenditure side, that you know, a large yeah, portion of that's being carried over, yeah, as POs. Um, and the occupational side on the revenue side, you know, I can speak to that a little bit since you've asked, you know, with, with the Trump reform, tax reform. You know, businesses, um, throughout the city had given that $1,000 bonus per employee, which is great. That's great for our economy, great for the employees. I do not look for that to happen um, every year. It, it, it may. I, I, don't, I don't look for that. Uh, you know, and I spoke to the net profits. There was some catch-up there and some timing as well. Um, so it's, it's all good news, but, you know, I take it with a grain of salt as well because you know like I said there's some timing issues some carryover issues I spoke with our HR manager Josh Bachmar to you know we had large savings in uh, salaries and benefits in 1718 and I think we're looking to uh, to have uh, fewer vacancies in the next fit in the current fiscal year 1819 uh, particularly in, in the police department you know where we've been running um, under staff about 14 uh, vacancies uh, we're looking to possibly be fully staffed hopefully soon so uh, you know you won't be seeing savings as much in 1819 I don't think in your your salaries and benefits so um, I think it does it does bode well it goes a long way toward toward Moody's um, but like I said they do look at a variety of items so would you make the statement that it probably shouldn't get any worse we probably should look at the rate staying our, our rating staying the same if not improving? I, I see no reason um, for the rate to change. I see no reason uh, to be downgraded in any way. In fact, I'm hopeful that they'll change us from a negative outlook to a positive outlook is, is my hope and my expectation as well. Um, so, but we'll know, we'll know next week. Thank you for all your hard work and your staff's hard work. Very much appreciate the great job you and your everyone, all our department heads do. Thank you. Okay. If I could, Tom. Mayor. Huh? <laughs> Mr. Condor. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Bottom line, Angela, if you take out all of your encumbrances and everything else that uh, you'll have that you need to pay, then we're positive for the year to, to the tune of around 1.3, 1.2, 1.3. Correct. For the year. You know, keeping in mind, I had said there was some timing in sure. the developer incentive payouts. Right. So, you know, a chunk, not a chunk, but a portion of what you see here in the net profit and occupational revenue will be paid out from what was paid in by the developer in 1718. So there'll be a portion of that 
exit out the door in 1819. So to, to answer your question, essentially, for the most part, yes. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Welcome. Angela, do you have this number on the top of your head? I'm blindsiding you. If we had not taken the increase, what was the number to be uh, for our year end that we're projecting? Uh, when you refer to the increase, are you referring uh, to the taxes. occupational and the profit? Yes, I have that right here handy. Uh, we would have had a deficit of $3.3 million. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Anybody from the public? Okay. Um, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the, the uh, audit. Second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Ms. Amber. You're welcome, Mayor. The next item on the agenda is city uh, would be consider personnel appointments, uh, city manager. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Anthony Green, probationary, full-time, non-civil service appointment to labor maintenance helper with the Public Works Department, effective September 2nd. John Hodges, probationary, full-time, non-civil service appointment to bus driver dispatcher with the Public Works Department, effective September 4th. Regular status, we have Dylan Brown, Luke Camp, Robert Glenn, Tyler Grant, Stephen James, and Bruce Kegel, regular full-time non-civil service appointments to firefighter with the fire department, effective September 6th. Randall Foster, regular full-time non-civil service appointment to lieutenant with the police department, effective September 17th. And Jason Lee, regular full-time non-civil service appointment to sergeant with the police department, effective September 17th. These are all existing uh, positions, Mayor. Okay, uh, I'll make a motion to approve those. Could I have a second, please? Second. Okay, any discussion from the commission? Okay, hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Glenn, did you Mayor, have something you wanted to say? For the record, I want to recuse myself. Thank you. Okay. Um, City Manager, you got any comments left in you? <coughs> well, I do have one additional thing, Mayor. Okay. Uh, our TIF consultants are in, in town today. As, as we've learned, the TIF process is very, uh, very uh, regulated by the state, and so we have consultants who are with us today. So I'd like to recognize Brent Antle and Casey Bolton with Commonwealth Economics. Gentlemen, appreciate you being here and all your uh, effort and assistance you provide to us. Mayor, with your permission, I'd like to invite one of them uh, to give a brief uh, status update regarding the TIFs to the commission. Sure, be glad get something for our money <laughs> thank you you're welcome uh, please state your name and address for the record uh, Casey Bolton with Commonwealth Economics uh, 108 Esplanade uh, Lexington Kentucky thank you sir uh, thanks for your time we've been working uh, pretty diligently throughout the uh, well for several years now but throughout this year to uh, really now that some of the TIF projects are getting underway we've been tracking the expenditures made in each project and compiling those and what we call capital expenditure reports uh, that is reported to you all um, and more importantly to the state uh, so that they can understand the types of public infrastructure that is uh, being built within each TIF district and eventually uh, next year we will be submitting a request to the state for reimbursement of certain expenditures um, uh, assuming that incremental tax revenues are generated in each district which um, we are also tracking and we expect that to be on uh, course as well. Uh, it's a pretty uh, onerous process uh, to keep both TIF districts in compliance. Uh, we do TIF compliance uh, in several cities around the state and uh, we are always pleasantly surprised at the processes that uh, the city of Owensboro has in place. Um, pretty forward thinking on a lot of that and uh, we intend to share that with our other clients. Angela does a really good job. If you have any questions, happy to answer. Yeah, John said he was sending my his best man up here, so I'm I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, Our way. When do you anticipate us getting some money? So the process is uh, we have activated the TIF district. Mm -hmm. um, so as of January one, we are tracking the uh, construction wages that are occurring out uh, at the Highway 54 project. Uh, each year, 
you will make a request to the state. It's due in April of the f year following uh, activation. So in April of next year, we'll submit a request to the state for reimbursement of incremental tax taxes generated within the footprint um, over the calendar year 2018. And that will continue until the full amount's been recovered from. So it's one time a year? Once a year, yeah. How long does it take the state to send the money? Uh, depends how well we package it up for them. And, well, you're and in compliance, right? And you got it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. And we stay on them pretty well to be sure they have what they need from us. Um, and generally that would occur in the fall. In the fall. So it'll be after July the 1st. Yes. It would probably be uh, September, October. That's the end of the fiscal year, right? Okay. Anybody else? Commissioner Condor. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, great to see you guys here. I know that the uh, former assistant city manager was one of the main architects of our two tips that we had. And so staff picked up the pieces extremely well. Yeah. And basically, from what I understand, a little bit of Owensboro envy is going on. That there are <laughs> a couple other places that maybe not have managed their tips as well, but now see the models that is being developed here and possibly be transferred to other places. Is that correct? That, that is going correct. Uh, I don't know if we coined that term or not, but uh, you know, you all are one of the first communities of your size to implement the TIF program, and uh, we've uh, had a lot of people ask about it around the state. We've since then we've done work in Moorhead and Ashland. Um, I'll be in Paducah later this week to help them look at a downtown TIF district. So. So do uh, we get referral fees or anything like that? I mean, <laughs> can we copyright what we did? <laughs> Software, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Okay, just check. there might be an opportunity there. All right, great. If there's a way, I'm sure Angela will come up with it. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you for all your work. Else? Thank you all for coming. Glenn. Do you sense uh, that there's long-term interest in getting rid of the TIF program? We heard discussion about a year and a half, two years ago, that the the administration was a bit hostile to these that they were they were pulling back I mean you work with these all the time do you get that sense that they're they're not as interested in doing them and they'd like to phase them out or greatly restrict uh, the capacity for cities and counties to reimburse these <coughs> big projects what's your sense I don't know that I would say that I would say that um, budgets around the state are a lot tighter than they have been and I think the current administration has recognized that and I think they've taken a lot closer look at TIF projects recently uh, to be sure that the, the return on it, the state's investment uh, is worthwhile. And um, you know, as some of the larger projects and particularly border projects um, have taken place, there becomes a little less room for uh, what they call net positive impact. But uh, they, are, they are looking at projects uh, closely as you know, they always have, but um, with purse strings a little tighter, I'd say that's a a fair statement uh, for all incentives. Yeah, I just think it's an excellent tool for cities and municipalities to have at their disposal when they're properly run. And, so and without a local option sales tax, it's one of your, your best maneuvers to get money back from the state that you all generate here. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Welcome. And the rumor is the state doesn't want to give us local taxing off because they want to take the six. Is that correct? <laughs> no Come comment. on, man, get out on the edge. <laughs> no comment. No, no comment. <laughs> uh. Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate y'all. You can stay down here, spend a little money, you know, at the, where are you staying, Hampton or something? Hampton. Oh, good. All right, thank you. Thank you all. We appreciate you. Okay. I've lost my place. Okay. You, you got something else you threw well just just relatedly that, okay that as the activity picks up in the tiffs and we start having revenue in and then revenue out we'll give regular periodic reports or updates to the Commission so whether they're semi-annual or you know depending on the various milestones but we'll do that on a regular basis going forward would that be in a work session or a Commission meeting it, it just depends whatever we you know works from a scheduling perspective or it could be either okay and to that copyright uh, scenario how many successful TIFs have there actually been in Kentucky? And I'll go back to the 100% one that was there eight years ago, ten years ago. Just how many successful tax increment financing districts have, have been in the, in the state? I know maybe uh, Newport on the levee, 
Sure, I think I think it depends how you define successful. Um, there are a lot of well, we're hanging a big old hat <laughs> on how successful this thing's going to be. Yeah. That's why I was curious. Well, I think you know there are a lot of projects that have happened that wouldn't have otherwise, and um, you know I think uh, those projects have had pretty significant impacts on the cities that they've occurred. I think you look at Louisville; um, they've had several uh, successful TIF projects. Uh, the new Omni Hotel we worked on recently. Uh, in Louisville, it's an over $300 million project, um, and then that just opened. Uh, Is that convention center part of that, too? It's right across the street, um, so it's, it's very complimentary to the convention center. Um, Newport on the levee has been successful. Um, I think people would argue that for all the bad press it's gotten, the Yum Center um, <laughs> has created a lot of impact in the area. Um, you know, quite frankly, if you look at uh, the downtown area, pre-YUM Center and post-YUM Center, they've had a lot of additional investment. And uh, while it may have been structured a little differently or managed differently, I think uh, it's created a lot of investment in the area and generated a lot of visitors uh, that wouldn't have been there otherwise. I think if they just let UK play there a couple of home games, it'd even be better, <laughs> wouldn't it? I'd be there. <laughs> I'd be okay. there. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, item number 10, communication from elected officials. Commissioner Pam smith Wright. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, you know, tonight we were talking about how well uh, Kevin has done in his six months. And uh, I just want to give the same shout out to Nate because uh, he's been here less time than that. And just today, or today and yesterday, I've had people to call me about mosquitoes, about retention ponds, about uh, abandoned houses, and uh, and recycling um, these water bottles and, and how come we don't recycle them and we send them somewhere else and somebody else does it and all of that. But he has given me an answer to every single question and he has made sure that each person that I ask him to address about these problems, they have called me and said that, you know, you got this taken care of for me, Pam, I really appreciate it. And, and it's not me. I want to just give kudos to him because he's doing a great job to have been here for the time that he's he has. So, thank you. I've given you a lot of answers. Some of them might have even been correct. Not sure. Uh, so to, to just echo what what Kevin said, he said it right. You know, we all have a role to play. My role is maybe more visible at times, but it's no more important than anybody else on the team. And I appreciate our team and appreciate your comments. So you can't stub your toe now, see, you got you up on a, pe <laughs> got you up on a pedestal. Commissioner Glenn. Uh, just a couple of things. I uh, want to, uh, again, uh, thank OPD for the great job they do. They had their wards presentation the other night, and uh, I don't know how many officers won awards, but it was, it was a lot, and each one richly deserved. Uh, but it's such a well done event, uh, and it's nice that it's at the convention center. So, Chief, congratulations to you and your team. Thanks for keeping us safe, but more importantly, thank you for the great job your officers do just listening to the, the collection of outstanding police work they engaged in in just one year is, is amazing. Thank you again. Second, the Senior Center had its annual event. Daniel Peebler and their group, they recognized citizens who made a significant contribution to the senior community. And I, I think uh, that is such a worthwhile endeavor and they're gonna try and work to get grants because ultimately they wanna replace that building and they've changed their name and their branding. And I think that's a good step to get grants. So uh, those are two real positive events that occurred in our community this week that I had a chance to drop in and share our take in. Thank you. That's all I've got, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Villada. Uh, real quick, the uh, walk to end Alzheimer's is this coming Saturday at Smothers Park. I'm not 100% sure on the time, but I'm sure you can find that out. <laughs> something kind of. Man, I could drop one on you right now. <laughs> I was opening it up for you, Mayor. I gave you, <laughs> gave you a chance, man. man. I gave you a chance. But that seriously, was that's. Tea, dude. <laughs> that's, that's the cause that's close to my heart. Uh, Mine, too. Make sure, uh, make sure you participate in that those folks other than that mayor uh, i'm just glad to be here thank you <laughs> <laughs> commissioner uh, condor <laughs> thank you mayor a little composure here uh just on a personal note um a week ago tuesday we had our uh, my wife and i had our 18th grandchild born little george 
He was only uh, 34 weeks, uh, 5 pounds, 10 ounces. And he was born with a condition where his... Don't say all that. Okay. <laughs> he was born with a, a very hard condition. There you go. There you go. And uh, today he had surgery. And at 4.15, everything was placed back in. And he's doing very, very well. So the prayers and concern that everyone has offered up, uh, he's doing well. The projection is hopefully Thanksgiving for him to come home. Maybe he'll come home by Halloween. So I appreciate everyone's good thoughts and prayers for that. It puts things in perspective when you see that happen. So thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. No one complains about the high cost of health care when you have a situation like that, do they? Yes, sir. Wonderful people. Okay. Um, I have a great announcement. We're going to cancel next city commission meeting on September the 4th because it's the day after Labor Day. And then we'll also cancel nine, the 9 11 meeting because it's the honor flight and the uh, uh, Freedom Walk. The next um, council meeting will be the 18th of September. Um, last week, I uh, had an opportunity to. Uh, meet the national commander of the VFW a nice ceremony down at the VFW where they uh, pulled out the red carpet for him he's a very very humble man so it's great to do that convention center was hopping this weekend and Laura I gotta find out how those people get so orange in, a, in that bodybuilding what is that they got on them do you know just spray tan yeah. that's kind of you know they glow, glow in the dark they were so dark I'm telling you <laughs> It was unreal. And I'm excited about the Wendell Foster Mini Marathon. We haven't had one in a long time, and uh, John Gleason is a former collegiate r runner, and uh, I think that's going to be a, a great um, uh, addition to what we do. And I, I want to thank Tim Ross for uh, jumping through the hoops. Did CSX ever acquiesce? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything from the public? Please come to the podium and State your name and address for the record, if you'd like to speak tonight. Wow. Okay. I will make a motion to adjourn. Could I have a second, please? We're already adjourning. <laughs> Where's the rules of Roberts guy, anyway? <laughs> Commissioner smith Wright, help yourself. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, forgot until you said it. But Point your finger at me. I'm not pointing <laughs> oh. my finger at you. Okay, go ahead. You've got a, you've got a thing with that, don't you? Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Forget what you're going to say. Yeah, because okay. you just Come on. threw me off VFW. Face. Uh, no, it oh. wasn't the VFW. It's about the Freedom Walk. Okay. And because we're going to cancel the meetings and stuff, I didn't realize that I wasn't going to have another chance to say something about it. But anyway. Um, I encourage everyone to come out for our Freedom Walk on September the 11th. And uh, we're planning to change the time because the honor flight is also uh, taken off that day. And um, I always invite all of the students who are in ROTC at all of the high schools to please come and be a part of our Freedom Walk. And this year, um, since the honor flight is happening, they will get a chance to see these uh, these veterans, these heroes, and take pictures with them and all of that before we start the walk down to the uh, uh, shelter memorial so everyone that if you can we're going to s line up for the walk at 11:30, and the walk will start at 12 so please come out and uh, be a part of this thank you and thank you mayor for allowing me to that's okay i'll break any rule for you Pam. <laughs> so is, is it walk only can you ride a bicycle can you push kids in a stroller i mean oh yeah you can can you, you can. okay yes all right else no, I'm done well now I'll make a motion to adjourn could someone give me a second please? second all in favor indicate by saying aye aye, aye. aye. thank you <laughs> <laughs>